So with a new year approaching, I thought I'd create a quick video of what is in my camera bag as I'm a YouTuber, full-time filmmaker, as well as a photographer. And I'm gonna start right now. Now, I haven't done a video like this at all. I've seen quite a few other YouTubes do it, and I thought it's quite an interesting topic because I recommend so many different equipment. I've done so many reviews and things like that on my YouTube channel. It's difficult to work out what I actually like. And obviously, if I like it, the likelihood it's probably in my camera bag. So today I thought I'd make a quick video of what's in my camera bag as a hybrid shooter. Now, outside of YouTube, you guys obviously know me. I am on YouTube pretty much all the time, but I also do full-time filmmaking as well as full-time photography. I'm a wedding photographer. So my gear changes depending on what I'm doing, either photography or either filmmaking. So I think this will be quite a good insight into what I actually shoot with day to day. So talking about what is in my camera bag, what camera bags do I actually have? Well. I have a variety from Billingham all the way up to my Pelican case, but predominantly I mainly use two. The first one is this one. Now this is my Polar Pro Drone Trekker. Now this is a really good bag, mostly to do with its size. It's a decent size bag. It's not massive, but it's also not quite, it's not too small either. You can fit about two camera bodies, three lenses, and maybe a few accessories. Now I have been, as you can see, all over the world with this bag. Everywhere I go, I try and get a patch. Uh, I've got UK badges, I've got US badges, as well as I've recently been to Norway, so I've got some Norway's patches to go on here. I think it's brilliant for travel. Now, obviously it is designed for a drone. Originally, I think it was designed for a Phantom drone, but it's great for photography, but also filmmaking. You can have tripods in there, cameras, all sorts. So if you're after kind of an everyday bag, the Drone Trekker bag is really, really good, but it doesn't fit everything that I need to. So if I'm ever going a wedding or if I'm ever on a film set, you need way more equipment than you would do if you were just traveling. That's why, I own this. Now this is not really a bag, I suppose you could say. It's more of a Pelican case, but it is brilliant for photography, but also filmmaking. You can fit genuinely everything in there. Now, obviously it can't fit tripods and light stands and massive light rigs, but it can fit pretty much everything valuable. So all your cameras, your lenses, your filters, your everything pretty much you have value to can fit in this bag. Now, the reason I like that is firstly, because it's lockable. So if you are going to a not so great of an area, you could go ahead and lock it, which is nice. Sometimes weddings aren't in the best areas. So that's really nice that you can lock it, but it's also got an air tag in it. So if I'm ever, you know, wanting to work out where it is, recently it's been on a plane. So it's always nice to know that, ah, there we go. looks like it's been on the plane with me. So that's always nice to have. So let's go ahead and move on to cameras. So my main photography camera, is this, this is a Canon EOS R and I actually shoot on two uh, because I've got a dual harness strap if I'm ever at a wedding, usually I'm shooting on two because I shoot prime, prime lenses. So I shoot usually a 35 mil and an 85 mil or maybe some other lenses depending on the venue that I'm at. Now I really, really like this camera. I think it's great. It's been with me since about 2019 and then I brought the other one around 2020. Uh, I think they're really good. They do have their foibles, so the ISO changing dial, not a lot of people like this little touchscreen thing. Obviously they don't, they've removed it on the newer cameras. And also it's only got one SD card slot, which is a bit annoying, especially for weddings. I like shooting on two if I can, but to be honest with you, for what I'm after, this camera is genuinely great. But also, it's probably the camera that I'm going to be updating first. Now, I've recently brought a Canon EOS R5, which is my other camera that I shoot on with, but I absolutely love my R5. And this just doesn't live up to it, especially the autofocus. It's good, but it isn't great. So the first camera I'm probably going to update, I took both, basically both of my Canon EOS R's. I'm not sure what I'm going to get yet. I might get a Canon R6 maybe, or an R6 Mark II, or I might even just splash out and buy another R5. It all depends, but at the moment for photography, I shoot on two Canon EOS R's. Now, like I was saying, I also shoot on a Canon EOS R5. Now, this is an amazing camera. By far the best camera I think I've ever shot with pretty much out of all brands. Now, obviously, I'm quite lucky with the job that I've got that I can shoot Fuji, Sony, Nikon, Canon, and I ended up absolutely falling in love with the R5 when I tested it. It's genuinely, for a hybrid shooter, someone like myself, you couldn't ask for more. The video specs, the photography specs are absolutely tip top. Now, it 
when I did originally buy it, because it was pretty much one of the very first ones kind of in the UK, I pre-ordered it pretty much straight away. It did have overheating issues to start off with, but with firmware updates and things like that, that's pretty much bygone, really. It's not really much of a problem. Now, I did have a problem this summer in the UK. As we all know, it was very, very hot. So it did overheat once or twice, but to be honest, I did push it to the absolute limits. And to be honest, I don't think any camera would have not overheated, to be honest with you. Now, this is great. I would love another one, but the main problem is they are hella expensive. I think there's about four, four and a half thousand pounds now. So, yeah, they're definitely on the higher budget side, but if I could afford to, I definitely would have had them. Now, obviously, it's an RF mount. Now, all the cameras that I've got are RF mount, and annoyingly, I don't own a lot of RF lenses, which we're just about to get onto. So, I'm having to use these things called EF2 RF adapters. I own two. Again, I, I usually shoot on two cameras. So, these particular adapters are absolutely brilliant, but eventually, hopefully, after some time and a little bit more budget has been thrown at it, I'll hopefully buy some more RF lenses. So let's go ahead and move on to what lenses I have in my camera bag. So the first lens I really brought as a professional photographer and also filmmaker is this. This is the Sigma 35mm f1.4 and this is the Canon EF fit. Now this is a great lens. I love 35mm prime lenses. I probably think it's probably my most popular kind of focal range when it comes to filming but also uh, weddings and photography. To be honest with you, a 35mm is brilliant. I just love the compression. It looks really nice, but it doesn't look ultra wide. It also doesn't look telephoto. It's that nice range where everything just looks right, I think. And I think that reflects with a lot of the photos that you can see. Now, it is getting a little bit old now. I think I brought it in February 2019. It's my basically my very first ever proper prime lens. Uh, originally, I owned, like, I think, a 50mm f1.8, that little nifty 50, but I don't really count that because to be honest, I got rid of it pretty much straight away when I started actually doing full-time filmmaking. But this lens here, if you're after a really good prime lens, I'd highly recommend the Sigma. Now, I'd love the Canon one. I recently did a review on the Canon one. I think it's brilliant, but far too expensive. And to be honest with you, I actually think the Sigma one is better performing in some aspects and it being half the price, highly recommend it. So yeah, if you're after a 35 mil prime lens, highly recommend the Sigma. So the next lens I brought is a true hybrid lens. It's great for photography, but also great for video. And that is this. This is the Canon 85mm f1.4 IS. Now it's probably my most expensive lens I've got in my kit. I think it's about 1700 pounds, I think. I definitely brought it second hand. I didn't pay brand new prices, but I think it's great mostly because of its image stabilization. It's rare that you can find image stabilization in a prime lens. Now, I think this is really good both for photography and video. I love the compression. A lot of the wedding photos I shoot is either on a 35 mil or on this 85 mil. Now, I do like the Sigma 85mm f1.4. The problem is it's a lot larger and it doesn't come with image stabilization. And out of the two, I actually think that it's actually worth the upgrade going for the Canon lens. Now, I really like this because of its compression. The foreground and background separation on an 85mm looks really, really nice, especially at f1.4. Most of the photos you're looking at today are f2. That's my favorite lens, especially when it comes to people. I would crank it a little bit higher maybe if I'm doing multiple people, but I usually just use this for couple shots, establishing shots, things like that. I think having an 85 mil in your camera bag is really important, especially if you're doing any portrait work or especially if you're doing any weddings. Now, a more recent addition to my camera bag is this. This is the Sigma 24 mil F1.4 art series lens. Now, this is a great lens. It's a little bit wider than the 35 mil, so I don't use it all of the time. But if I'm ever doing any group shots or any establishing shots, it's quite good for film as well. Really, I actually fell in love with the Canon 24mm f1.4 when I did a review, and I loved it for video. That kind of slightly wider angle look, it's not majorly distorted. 24mm is right on that point where anything wider is going to start looking quite distorted, so it's that lovely balance. Now, I really like it for weddings, mostly for group portraits. So if I'm doing more than one person, let's say I've got a group of 10 people, this is great to get absolutely everyone in. It's also quite good for establishing shots as well. So if you want to kind of really focus on the great venue that you're at, this 24mm is great. Now, I could go a little bit wider, and I do own a wider lens than this, but predominantly this is my main use lens, mostly because it's an f1.4, so it gives you a nice, if you're in a darker environment, you can really reduce those apertures down to f1.4 and let lots of light in, and to be honest with you, really, really good lens. So if you're after a, a little bit more of a wider angle look than a 35mm, the Sigma 24mm art series is really good, and also it's got very similar colors and look to the actual 
Sigma 35mm. So as a pair, they're really, really good to keep the consistency of your photos, which again, if you're doing a whole series of portraits, highly recommend it. Now a lens I have with me all the time, but to be honest, I rarely use these days, is this. This is a Canon EF 100mm f2.8 macro. And it's the only macro lens I actually own. And I think it's really important to own a macro lens as a wedding photographer. Sometimes they're you want to focus on the fine details, let's say the wedding ring, or you want to do something quite creative, it's really handy to have. But I'm not always in the position where I have time to set up something that I actually want to take a photo of. Usually I'm just like, oh, I'll just take a photo of my 85 mil, click, done. Because sometimes it's a really, really quick and fast paced environment. But sometimes I want to slow down, take my time really focusing on a specific, maybe they've got a really beautiful engagement ring. That's where the 100 mil really does stand out, which is why I don't use it all the time. But it's always, I think, really important to have it in your camera bag. Another reason I really, really like it is actually for filming. Now it's great, again, you can get a little bit closer than you would normally you, well, normally with other lenses, again, because of that macro ability. So if you wanna focus on something really small, let's say a, a, a ladybug, or you wanna focus on someone's eyes when they're blinking to offer a little bit of different, like a closer look, then having a macro lens, I think is really, really important. It's not something I, it's not essential. I wouldn't say you'd need it straight away, but if you're wanting to expand your kit, a 100mm macro or a macro lens like this, I think is really, really important. Now, as you can tell, I predominantly shoot on prime lenses and that's for a variety of reasons. Prime lenses offer you better aperture and also sharper image quality. And as a professional photographer and filmmaker, that's what's really important is the quality of work. But it doesn't mean I don't own any zoom lenses. I actually own this. This is the Canon EF 70 to 200 mil F 2.8 Mark II. Now, I really like this lens for a variety of reasons. Grant you, it's a zoom lens, so it hasn't got the sharpest image quality, but it is still really, really good. Now, it is an F 2.8. Again, like I was saying previously, my favorite aperture to shoot for most situations is F 2. It's a good amount of foreground and background separation without it looking too shallow. But f2.8 isn't too far away from it. It's only one stop. So you can just crank the ISO just one stop higher and it should balance it out. Now, this is really handy from the back of the venue or from a fair distance away or if even, even for wildlife photography. Having a lens like this in your camera bag is really helpful. Again, it's not necessarily essential. The main lenses I would say are essential are 35mm, 50mm and an 85mm. But Overall, I think it is nice to have a lens like this in your camera bag. Now, if I'm ever traveling, I don't bring it with me, far too heavy. But if I'm, you know, close to home, I'm in the UK, I'm not actually on a, going on a plane or anything like that, and weight and size isn't an issue, you would always find this in my camera bag. Now, they are all my professional lenses, and they're all the lenses I predominantly use when I'm actually being paid to shoot. But as a hobby photographer as well, I also like taking photos when I'm traveling. And that's why I own a 50mm f1.8 and a 16mm f2.8. Now these are my only RF lenses today. I don't currently own any other RF lenses, mostly because they are very, very expensive at the moment. And I predominantly buy secondhand because you get so much more value for money and there just aren't that many RF secondhand lenses at the moment. So I've got my 50mm for kind of, you know, just standard portraits and I've got my 16mm f2.8, which is more my, you know, wide angle landscape work. Now I actually do use the 16mm a lot more professionally than I would do the 50mm. This I never usually bring with me. To be honest, I actually don't really like a 50mm look. I much prefer a 35mm or an 85mm. It's obviously my own personal opinion, but the 16mm comes really handy if you're in a tight venue. Let's say you're at a church and you really want to show off the kind of grandeur of that church, a 16 mil can do that. You know, the 24 mil, although it's a 1.4 is great, just isn't wide angle enough. So having a 16 mil can, can really, really make your photos stand out. So if I'm ever going traveling or if I'm just, you know, going on a family holiday or anything like that, these two lenses are the ones that are in my camera bag. Now, of course, it isn't just cameras and lenses that are in my camera bag. I've also got a whole range of accessories as well, like smoke bombs, drones, fractal filters, LED lights. These are the things that I actually enjoy shooting with. Now, obviously, I don't want this video to be 100 years long, so let's just focus on the main three accessories that I usually have in my camera bag. So the first accessory that's pretty much always in my camera bag is this. This is my DJI Mavic 3 and it's a drone. Now these drones, drones in general, are really good to get another perspective of the position that you're in. So if you're in a great location, you really wanna show it off, a drone is probably the best way to do it. Without a drone, you can't get some of the shots. You can, you know, you can get a new camera, get a new lens, but a drone offers a totally different perspective on your environment. Now, I've recently went to Norway with this specific drone, and 
granted it was freezing, but some of the shots I got from it are genuinely outstanding. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without using a drone. So if you're after a different perspective and really add a, you know, another level to your either photography or filmmaking, highly recommend a drone, especially the Mavic 3. I think it's got a 21 megapixel micro four thirds sensor, far better than other drones that are currently on the market. Really good for it basically image quality, but if you're after slightly smaller drones, the Mini 3 Pro, the Mini 3, even the little Spark cameras, they're really, really good drones, although they don't offer the best image quality, they are far smaller and far lighter. So if you are, you know, traveling around the world, something like that is probably going to be perfect. But for me, image quality is really important, which is why I went for the Mavic 3. Next is definitely a photography accessory and our flashes. Flashes are really important if you're in a low light environment or you want to add a little bit more creative flair to your photos. Now I use basically Pro Photo A1X. I've got two of these. Uh, I'm thinking of buying a third one as well. They are genuinely amazing lights. Now I'm trying to be a little bit more creative with my work, especially as you know, sometimes in the winter and autumn months, you know, you don't get much sun, so you've got to rely on flashes. And sometimes old churches, they don't have the best lights or, you know, they are sometimes quite dark and dingy. So having a light can just let you shoot at more acceptable shutter speeds and apertures. So highly, highly recommend flashes. They don't have to be pro photo. Grant new pro photo is ludicrously expensive, but if you are after very reliable lights, and that's what I say, the reliability of these lights, you turn them on, they just connect. There's no messing around. I have a few friends that use a Godox, nothing against Godox, but they're always messing around with lights or trying to change the settings. This one, turn it on and it pretty much just works, which is something I really like, especially if you're in a high pressure situation. The last thing you want to do is have problems with your equipment. So if you haven't ever used flash before, highly recommend using flash, especially for weddings. But you know, you don't have to splash out on massively expensive flashes like this. But if you can, Profoto lighting is lovely. Of course, when you're on a film set or you're at a wedding, you need to carry the cameras, which is why it's really important to get a nice and comfortable camera harness. You can get those ones that go over the neck, like the ones that actually come with your camera, but over time, it's gonna hurt your necks. You want one that's nice and comfortable. Now, I shoot on usually two cameras at the same time. Usually, I've got a camera with a 35 mm prime lens and a camera with an 85 mm prime lens. So I have to get a dual harness strap, which is why I got the Holdfast Moneymaker. Now, this is a really, really nice strap. It is you know, a little bit more expensive. It's also only sold in the US. So I actually had to import it into the UK, which again was another fee, but really good recommendations. A lot of my friends, wedding photography friends actually have this particular strap. It just, firstly, it looks really good, uh, especially if you've got a white shirt or a black shirt, just really stands out to make you look quite professional. But it's also just really, really comfortable as well. And to be honest, it looks really premium and I've been using it pretty much, you know, I've done about 25 weddings this year. I've used them for about 20 of them and never had a problem with it. Looks really good, really comfortable. And to be honest, that's the main reason why it's always in my camera bag. Now, before we go ahead and end this video, there are a few things I just want to mention that you should definitely have in your camera bag. If you're, you know, a beginner and you're not sure what to put in your camera bag, basically, these are the things that I think you, I highly recommend having in your camera bag at all times. Firstly, our batteries. Doesn't matter what camera you've got, doesn't matter what flashes you use, always make sure you have extra and backup batteries in your camera bag. Now I've got, obviously, I shoot on two cameras usually, so I usually have a set of batteries in my cameras, as well as maybe two extra batteries just in case. Wedding days are sometimes quite long, Got you know, I don't always do weddings, but it's always nice to have an extra set of batteries in your camera bag. Also, try and make sure things are charged before you go. So if you're bringing microphones, you're bringing flashes, try and make sure everything is charged. Again, you, if, you, if you forget to charge them, it's always nice to have a backup set in your camera bag. And talking about backups, SD cards, really, really important. You won't believe how many times I've forgotten SD cards on a shoot and then gone, oh, thank goodness, I've got a set of backup SD cards hidden away in a little zipper in my camera bag. Having just those things are really important because obviously without an SD card, you can't save any of the photos of the day. And you don't want to have to drive home again and you know, it doesn't look very professional. So these are the things I always recommend having in your camera bag. I one more thing I suppose you could think of is a tripod plate. You know, sometimes I don't put my tripod plate back on the tripod and when I bring it, sometimes it's in a bag, I don't look and then I'm like, oh sh shit, I haven't brought my tripod plate. So these are the things I've maybe put a spare one in your camera bag just in case. It's sometimes I've gone, I'm like, well, I'm not using a tripod today because I haven't brought my bloody tripod plate. Uh, I've brought the tripod, but not the plate, which is obviously just as important as the tripod. So 
Those things I highly recommend always trying having in your camera bag. Well, brilliant, there we go, guys. So that's what's in my camera bag 2023. And hopefully I'll make a video in maybe six months or a year's time to kind of show you the progression of what's changed, why I've changed it, why I've upgraded and things like that. But write it down in the comments below what you guys use. Do you prefer one brand over another? What's your camera bag? Do you have other accessories that you recommend? Make sure guys to write it down in the comments below. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel, it really, really does help me out. Also, if you're interested in video or maybe Premiere Pro tutorials, tips and tricks, I've got a brand new channel on YouTube called Video Fever, which I go over Premiere Pro tutorials as well as video tips and tricks. So if you're a hybrid shooter like myself, that particular channel might be interesting to you. So go over there and subscribe. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.